Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also at our website. Also, be sure to check out our Facebook group. Just look for Daily Bible Podcasts over on Facebook. It's a wonderful community group, and we would love to have you be a part of it. Yes, please. And we have new members coming in all the time. So, hey, new members, let us know where you are uh, listening from, where you live. Uh, We had a new member over the weekend who is from London, and that's so So exciting. That's so exciting to uh, get to meet her and talk with her and find out just what what life is like in London. I don't know what life's like. We in should London. go visit cool. her in London. <laughs> we should. That would be so much fun. Uh-oh. Okay, so today we are reading Ezekiel 34, 35, and 36. Ezekiel 34 is a prophecy against the shepherds of Israel, meaning the leaders and the kings who were supposed to guide and care for the people. And then this chapter uses the metaphor of shepherds and sheep to describe the relationship between the the rulers and the people. And they're accused of looking after themselves and ignoring the needs of the flocks. They have fed themselves and they've neglected the weak and the sick and the lost sheep. And because of this, God declares that he will hold them accountable. But the last part of the chapter, thankfully, introduces this hope where God Mm. promises to become a shepherd of his people. It says, I myself will tend my sheep and give them a place to lie down in peace, says the sovereign Lord. I will search for my lost ones who strayed away and I will bring them safely home again. So I just love that feeling that we get at the end of the chapter. And then we go even deeper. So it's like, okay, you guys are shepherds. These are the sheep. Then I'm the shepherd going to bring you back. And then we go further and it says about that I will feed them on the mountains of Israel and by the rivers and all the places where the people live. And as for you, my flock, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will judge between one animal of the flock and another, separating the sheep from the goats. And that's verse 17. And then I'm like, wait, this sounds familiar. The sheep and the mm-hmm. goats thing. I don't remember this from the Old Testament, but it's there. Because in Matthew 25, 31 through 34, Jesus says, when son of man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne and they'll be gathered in his presence and he'll separate the sheep from the goats. And so I was like, wait, this is so cool. Because when Jesus was talking in the New Testament, they totally know that he was talking about Mm -hmm. Ezekiel's prophecy. Um, And then it talks about the Messiah, which is the Davidic shepherd who will care for his people. And I love how in these places it says, I, the Lord, have spoken. It's like God says this is going to happen. Mm Mm-hmm. Ezekiel 35 is a prophecy against Edom, which is Mount Seir, and it's a neighboring nation of Israel. And like we were reminded a few days ago, the Edomites were descendants of, do you remember, Michelle? Esau. Esau, yes. So they had this long-standing animosity, and God condemns Edom for its pride and hostility Mm -hmm. against Israel. And the Edomites have taken advantage of Israel's misfortune And they have seized their land and rejoice in their suffering. And because of these actions, God says that he will will judge Edom um, for their hatred, their aggression, and the desire to expand at Israel's expense. So we see, like, remember Israel, the people are being taken away. And here's Edom taking their things and taking over their land. And God, God sees what's happening. God sees what's happening and and we are seeing this this cyclical, you know, progression uh, again throughout all of the prophets of God saying, okay, I'm going to judge Israel for their sins, then I'm going to judge the other nations for their sins, and then we see him saying, but there is hope. I will bring you back just like Trisha was talking about, the good shepherd. God is going to bring us back. And in Ezekiel 36, we see a promise to restore the land of Israel. Mm-hmm. God claimed this land for his own, for his own people long ago, and he says it's going to stay his land for his people. His name has suffered at the hands and mm-hmm. sins of his people, 
And he had to take care of that. He couldn't let that slide any longer, but he will make his name even greater by reestablishing this land for his people that will return for they will be coming home again. And when I read these words, I just kept thinking of the prodigal son and the father and mm-hmm. all that that prodigal son had to go through and all that the father lavished on him when he came home. It, it just, it feels like there is so much excitement and as hard as things are, there's going to be that remnant that is going to come back and they are going to be so excited to be with their God again. And God is also going to bring back life to things that have been desolate. The crops will grow again. Cities will be rebuilt. People and animals will inhabit the land of Israel once again. Israel had been defiled and polluted by murder and idols. God's name was tarnished, but God is protecting his mighty name by bringing his people home again. He will clean their filth and cleanse them from their sins. They will be ashamed of their actions. And we really haven't seen that so Mm -hmm. far, that they've been ashamed. They haven't been ashamed. They're like, oh, God, forgive us because life is hard. But they have not been ashamed. And just like he said to the early Israelites, you will be my people and I will be your God. And God finishes with, I am ready to hear Israel's prayers and to increase their numbers like a flock. They will be as numerous as the sacred flocks that fill Jerusalem's streets at the time of her festivals. Now, just remember the festivals when everyone came back, like all the Israelites came back. So God is saying, hey, I, they will be as numerous as the sacred flocks that fill Jerusalem street, that fill Jerusalem streets at the time of her festivals. The ruined cities will be crowded with people once more and everyone will know that I am God or that I am the Lord. And that really is just such a beautiful picture of just everybody's streaming back, like everyone coming back and worshiping God. And yeah, it's a, it, we finished on a happy note. I, I love that. And I love that like, they probably can't even picture that now because Jerusalem, remember, it's been torn down. Oh, yeah. The walls, the buildings, everything's caught on fire. The people are scattered. And so for Ezekiel to say, oh, no, we're going to be gathered like the festivals, which I'm doing the book of um, Hannah right now, a novel about Hannah. And, you know, they go to Shiloh every year. And it was hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that would go to these religious festivals. And so yeah. they can't probably even imagine. And what I love about when it talks about this restoration it's not just about the land it's about the heart of the people which is something different now that we're seeing in these chapters of Ezekiel and my heart soared as I read Ezekiel 26 25 through 26 which was what you were talking about but I just wanted to read this first because it's so good it says then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean your filth will be washed away and you will no longer worship idols I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you I will take out your stony stubborn heart and give you a tender responsive heart and so I mean Thinking about it, from the time the Israelites have been grumbling in the desert, we have been falling along with very hard-hearted people. And I think when we look in the mirror, I you know I'm like, oh yeah, there's another hard-hearted person. So it's not just pointing at them, but it just makes me realize like what the Bible says is true. Because you know, why would you write down story after story of your failures? You know what I mean? Because we're reading all mm-hmm. their history. All the Psalms, all the Chronicles, the all these books, all the prophets. If the Bible wasn't true and you were to write a story about yourself, like you would make a different story than we have just been a hard hearted people for a very long right. time. Yeah. So as I've been reading this and as I saw that and thinking about, yes, this hard heartedness, it's just amazing that they wrote this down, that they chronicled it, that they wrote the songs about it and that we're reading it today, even though it's been hard for us to go through. I mean, if I were to write my life story, which I've written in bits and pieces here, it's like you want to highlight more of the good things. And it's just, it's been a year of reading about a hard hearted people. So the fact that God's like, I will give you a heart of flesh. It's like, oh, this sounds like wonderful. Like that, that with for them and for us. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, God is a God of miracles who is bringing, making plans to bring back his people. and. And we sit there and we're like, but your people were 
they treated you bad, God. Like they ignored mm-hmm. you. They, they, you know, basically sat and threw stones at you and, and everything. And yet God's like, I can forgive that because they are my people, Yeah, which gives us hope, which gives yeah. us great hope. Okay. Well, we need to take a break and hear from our sponsor. But when we come back, we will have a hopeful word of the day. Stay tuned. Okay, so our word of the day today is Eden. And Mm. Eden means a place of pleasure and delight. So kind of like the Garden of Eden is what I was thinking of. And and I was like, we we did not have Eden as the word of the day um, back in early January. I think we had like creation. We or probably something. had creation <laughs> because that was that was the pinnacle of what that we were learning. It. Yeah. And um, what I loved about today as we were reading. So the word Eden comes from Ezekiel 36, 35. The former wasteland is now like the Garden of Eden. And that is hard to picture. And I'm sure like put yourself in the Israelites shoes, kind of like what Trisha was talking about before the break. Like that was really hard for them to picture at all because they're looking around and they've probably never seen an Eden like anything Um, for the years that they've been living. Mm -hmm. uh, Their land has been in destruction and Um, And now they're exiled. So why would they believe that the former wasteland where they used to live would be a garden of Eden once again? But I want to take a second just to dive into the word Eden. And in looking at the Hebrew word for Eden, there are a couple of different speculations with regard to the actual meaning of this Hebrew term. So the Hebrew root for Eden is Adon which so ADN, which is the word Eden is derived and can be found in other references in the whole in the Hebrew Bible, such as the story of Sarah, when she heard the news about Isaiah. And that is she she said, so she laughed herself. And she said, Am I worn out? And my Lord is old? Shall I have pleasure? And so the original Hebrew word for pleasure is Edna, which is E D N A H which comes from the same root as Eden. And if we compare this to what is written in Psalms, in Psalms 36, verse 8, they feast on the abundance of your house Mm. and they give them drink from the river of your delights. So, I mean, be thinking through pleasure, delights, and the original Hebrew word for delights is akna, which derives from the same root as well. And therefore, and I know I probably mispronounced that because I'm just not very it's, well. It sounds Hebrew. good to me. <laughs> okay. I'm still waiting Thank for you. the person that's going to come on and tell us how to <laughs> pronounce all these things. Exactly. But so they're saying that that Hebrew word for delight, the meaning of the Hebrew word Eden has something to do with pleasure and delight. So think about the Garden of Eden. Think about what God is restoring. And um Moreover, the Hebrew word for delicate is miudan, mm. which comes from the same root as well. Delicate comes from the same root as well. And the initial Latin meaning of delicate is something that gives pleasure. So compare with delicious food it, that is tasty. It gives you mm. pleasure when you say it's a delicacy. So why this word? So Think about delicacy, think about pleasure, think about delight. And the reason why this word and verse really struck me was how God was comparing, again, the new Israel land to the Garden of Eden and how Eden points us to heaven. And Eden is this beautiful place, this beautiful place of delight. But as much as it was full of delight, it was also touched by sin. Not at first, Mm -hmm. but sin did come into it. There was an allowance for sin to come into it. So as great as it is, or it was, like God is rebuilding and restoring, but he's pointing us to something even greater. And just the reminder that heaven will be even greater and it will never be touched by sin. And so that verse again is the former wasteland is now like the garden of Eden. And that was Ezekiel 36, 35. 
I got so excited when I saw that you picked this verse because at first I'm like, Eden, what is she talking about? <laughs> then I read your notes and then I started looking back at what like I had written down. And remember, it was like first talking about the shepherd and the sheep mm-hmm. and then the, the Lord is a shepherd and then mm-hmm. the, that shepherd is going to come. So it's like heaven, Eden is going to have the lamb of God. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Ezekiel 34, 31, you are my flock, the sheep of my pasture. You are my people. I am your God. I am the sovereign Lord or I, the sovereign Lord have spoken. And I know Psalm 100 also has, you are the flock or you are the sheep of my pasture. Cause I remember, mm-hmm. I just remember my three-year-old saying, you are the, sh- you know, I am the sheep of your pasture, mm-hmm. but it's in there too. But yeah. I love this because these verses and what Jesus has to say again in the new Testament, when he was saying separating the, the sheep and the goats, it wasn't like he was pulling some random illustration out of nowhere. He was pointing to this, these passages and then also to Eden. He was talking about, you know, God was talking about replenishing Canaan, the promised land, but as God was hinting that, and then Jesus even further when he arrived, that forever Eden is that representation of the, the heaven of what is coming, the true Eden that's coming out of right. all of this. And it's subtle, but not subtle. Like those mm-hmm. are, who are listening are like, oh, wait, I'm hearing something. And then Jesus just like, it's not subtle anymore. He's like, this is how it's going to be. So this is the Berean translation because I, I said it just came out so clearly of what Jesus was saying. And it's Matthew 19, 28 through 30. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you in the renewal of all things, when the son of man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for the sake of my name will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. Pretty much everything that we read in Ezekiel Mm -hmm. can be summed up in that one or those few verses um, that Jesus says. So who will be judging the 12 tribes? Those who follow Jesus. And that goes back to that heart of flesh versus a heart of stone. They will be responsive to God and they will get the Eden. So also, did you catch that for the sake of my name? And so I just love how everything that we have been seen in those chapters all tie back and Jesus is like, yep, here it is. Here we go. And that's the cool thing about reading the Bible chronologically and then pointing ahead and looking to Jesus. It's all there. And he's just like confirming what the whole Old Testament is all about. It is really cool. And and just to realize for the sake of my name, I mean, that is, that's, that's a phrase that's kind of a new phrase that we've seen in the mm-hmm. prophets, but it's a phrase that is going to be contained that is going to be carried out for the sake of my name, because God is great. And he's like, my name is great. And I'm going to make my name even greater. So watch what I'm going to do. Yeah. Trisha, will you, will you pray for us today? Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you that you have Eden planned. It was Mm -hmm. originally this, this delightful place. And then your promises to the the captives that you're going to bring them back to another delightful place. But the ultimate delightful place that you have for us is in heaven with you. And I thank you that even as we head into the new Testament soon, that we're going to see so clearly how Jesus just welcomes us mm. to come into this Edom and come into eternity. Lord. And I pray for those who are listening that do not have a personal relationship, that they will just submit their lives to Jesus today and, and to know the hope that can be found mm-hmm in um, looking forward to Eden, looking forward to heaven, looking forward to eternity with Jesus. I pray that we may give you glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. Okay, so tomorrow we are reading Ezekiel 37, 38, 39, and then we're going to go back to Ezekiel 32, verses 1 through 16. And I want to take a second here to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com. You're going to find other great Christian podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God today. And we will see you here tomorrow. 
Bye-bye.